I could not resist, so I had to look it up. From the Office of National Statistics from a 2019 study, in ever-increasing numbers, we are now at a lesbian divorce rate of 72%. Well, damn. So the top four reasons that they are reporting getting divorced is feeling ignored, <laughs> inequality in the partnership, <laughs> adultery, <laughs> and domestic violence. <laughs> I've got it. I've got it. I know I know the reason. It must be because of the internalized misogyny that these women hold. That's why the divorce rate is 72%. So you're telling me that these women feel inferior no matter who they're with? I thought it was because of the men. I would love to hear these women explain how misogyny, narcissistic, and controlling men affected these lesbian relationships. So these are once again some stats that you will never hear a woman talk about because you want to know why? Because it shows that sometimes women can be the problem. And this is coming from other women when men do not play a part in this at all whatsoever. And this is the first time I've heard this before. The day that some of you start to learn what self-reflection is and understanding how you played a part in the destruction of your relationship and or your life, a lot of things will start to make sense and the world will become easier. But until you can just take accountability and understand that yes, you can be the problem even though you're a girl, you're just gonna live a life of denial and delusion. That up. It is truly, like we were saying before, like the most human thing. So I made this bet with my boss like a couple years ago and I've now added my best friend, her husband, and a couple other friends. But I feel like I'm just gonna open it up to the general public because I'm good for it. So the bet slash offer is if you introduce me to my husband and I marry him, I will give you $5,000. What? I don't have to stay married to him for long. I can get divorced in 20 years. It doesn't matter. But if you introduce me to a man that I walk down the aisle and get married to, I will give you $5,000. My DMs are open. So I'm offering a $5,000 referral bonus to anyone who finds me a husband. Yes, the video you just saw, that is her. This is what men keep telling us. We want to say that they're being mean and bashing women. When they tell us that you will hit the wall, once you, are, once you enter your mid-30s, they are not lying. What I don't understand about not only situations like this, but in general, right? If you've known you've wanted this thing, why have you put it on a back burner for so long? Now you're in a rush. Now you're offering money for people to find your husband. Like, that's a normal thing. Is that, is that normal? Guys, let me know. I, I ain't never seen anything like this. Every time I have an interaction with a man, I always think about that one tweet that said that every man needs to start off in jail and, like, prove their way out. And I've always agreed with that tweet, but even more so recently, I've agreed with it more and more because, guys, I could name, like, five bad experiences, scary experiences I've had with this species in, like, the past month, past couple of months. And don't get me wrong, maybe I could name, like, four good ones, maybe even five, if I'm being nice. But I feel like all these bad experiences are, like, grounds for generalization. Like, you should all start in jail and prove your way out. And before a man finds this video and tries to say, oh, it's not all of us, like, we're not all bad, Please calm down, okay? Because if the shoe doesn't fit, it's okay. And you will make your way out of jail. It's crazy because I believe this woman is 21 years old and she started on the man-hating journey already. I guarantee, she's talking about these experiences you have, I guarantee she doesn't even have enough life experience to be hating men. It's just she's probably growing up in a broken home. Actually, that, I guess that is, that is enough life experience. Growing up in a broken home, no daddy around, you know, that can kind of mold. I mean, it's sad, man. It's sad. Normally, it's the older, bitter women who have been through a lot of trauma. They've been used and abused and dumped by guys. But now you've got this generation of women who have little to no life experience. They just read this stuff on the internet. And that's where they're getting their man hate from. And they're just spewing it. Every man should start in jail. Because we're all just... We're all criminals, right? We're all potential criminals. But she's walking around with a cross on her neck looking really, really stupid. Firstly, it'd be the most gangsterous guys that'd be the biggest simps. I've said this before, they are the most 
feminine. Man got tattoos on his neck. He's probably a real street guy. I guarantee you. You step to this guy differently. He probably he's probably about that life. But these are the biggest simps. That's number one. Number two, I'm always a bit lenient with the, with the younger guys, right? Because we've all we've all all every single man has done some simp shit that we look back and we're like, I can't believe I've done that. Like that is some real sim shit. So I always give the younger guys some leeway. You know, you go until 20 years old, 21 years old, you shouldn't be simping. There's no, there's no leeway for this. There's no age in which you should be doing this. This is embarrassing. You're gonna look back on this in five years time and you probably won't even be able to watch it. That's how embarrassing it is. Your, 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 your lips are dry, you're crying, you're looking dusty. You know what I'm saying, in front of the car. Come on, man. You gotta do better than this. You gotta do better than this out here struggling to get this in my car men are walking back and forth no one is trying to help me she bought a tv she was struggling to get in her car men walked back and forth nobody helped her until she got to this old man old man helped her men aren't men anymore whatever right that's because they didn't find you attractive now i don't think you're an unattractive woman right i would have helped you regardless if i find you attractive or not i would have told you to get your weak ass out the way i would put it in the car boom 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 but i bet you if they would have found you attractive they would have stopped to help now, is that right or wrong? That's not for me to decide. And y'all have to realize nobody's obligated to help you. Now, let's get to the let's get to the real facts. What makes y'all think men back then were just these fucking Prince Charmings? I know you read the books, the stories, the movies, but this is real fucking life. The only reason why some of y'all grandmothers even stayed with your grandfathers this long is because, one, they didn't have a choice. Y'all never heard of Papa Was a Rolling Stone? How many of y'all grandmas got eight plus kids because she had no choice but to stay with your grandfather back then? I don't like some of y'all need to go talk to your grandmothers and ask them how men really were back then. You'll be surprised at some of the shit that you fucking hear. Y'all have this fantasy that men back then, all men back then were just these upstanding gentlemen because they all wore those big ass fucking suits and they just seemed so nice. That's I promise you shit was not peaches and cream back then. And y'all need to realize men are not who they used to be. Women are not who they used to be. Your grandmother wasn't popping cat on OnlyFans for $5.99 a month, right? She wasn't going around screaming, I'm independent. You didn't hear women going around screaming, I'm independent back then. You know what I'm saying? Times to change. Y'all just need to change with the fucking times. You guys, let me know. You helping a woman out in a situation like this, does it depend on her attractiveness? For me personally, the answer is no. I'm not doing any of the traditional stuff for a woman my age who's fit, healthy, and can do everything I can do. This is what I've been told. This is what I've been conditioned. This is how I've grown up. So, no, for me personally, couldn't give a damn if I was attracted to her. I'm walking straight box. That, that's just me. And I'm doing that as well because I'm minding my business, okay? I'm a big, I don't know if you guys can tell, I'm a big black guy. I don't want to intimidate none of these women. I don't want to, you know, push the forces of the patriarchy on them, you know, step in with my toxic masculinity trying to save the day. I'm minding my business. I want y'all to listen to this video, and this is why I always say it starts with men, because I'm always holding a man accountable. So listen. She was going to be celibate with you, but still let her ex clap. It's an evil world. As a man that's just recently put himself back out there into the dating world, I want you to know, almost everybody's letting their ex clap. If you meet someone for the first time and they aren't letting their ex clap, I need you to stop what you're doing go into your savings and buy that ring. It's as good as it's gonna get. I'm gonna tell y'all a crazy story and this is probably either happened to you or someone you know. A few years ago, one of my exes and I broke up. We still decided to smash. So she meets this guy in college. They've been talking for three months. The last two months, they agreed to be exclusive. The entire three months, she's been telling this guy that she goes home on the weekend. People, the brown sugar BBC is home. <laughs> she, she been coming on home a lot, all right? I know everything about this man. She's telling me everything about this man all while ignoring his phone calls while clapping her cheeks, texting him with my meat in her mouth. And then on the last week and once the three month period was over, she's like, Mark, I have something to tell you. We're about to start dating. We can't do this anymore. And I'm just like, you two are supposed to be exclusive the last two months. And she's like, that's different, people. It's not different. She's just a Lulu. <laughs> Well, I'm not taking her seriously whatsoever. So when the next weekend comes, I'm like, okay, I'm ready to scoop. She's like, I already told you we're done. I told you we shouldn't be doing this. Fellas, peep game. Listen to the vocabulary. If you speak woman, if you put I shouldn't be doing this into Google Translate, it's going to come out in English. I want to do it. 
I'm probably gonna do it, but I'm gonna feel bad about it. So I just pulled up. <laughs> I just, I was like, yo, I'm outside. She's like, nah, go home. I knock on the door, she answers. Her mom sees me, her mom's like, that's not your boyfriend. She's like, mom, shut up. <laughs> we go to her room and I'm like, your mom's met him? And she's like, yeah, my mom likes him. As soon as her mom leaves, I am beating the brakes off this woman. If anything, her being in a relationship made the sex better. <laughs> and not only am I clapping, she is saying some egregious things. I'm, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna stop it right there, okay? Oh my God! For some reason, I have, I have a feeling that the new boyfriend would probably beat you up. I, I don't know why. Also, bro does not take no for an answer. It's kind of weird. Anyway, the bullshit starts with other men. Other men who have no standards. Other men who have no boundaries. Because at the end of the day, I want y'all to think about this. She was talking to this guy for however many months he said she was talking to this guy. Other dude was smashing too. <laughs> Other dude was in them sweet walls too. Other dude was going balls deep whenever he felt the need to as well. Why would you want to continually penetrate a woman you would know is getting penetrated by somebody else on a regular basis. Maybe I'm possessive. Maybe it's my problem. Maybe I'm the problem. Get on the internet and just announce to the world that you were smashing a girl even after she told you, I, I, this isn't smart. I'm in a relationship. Woo -dee -woo. I know some of y'all gonna be in the comment section. Well, what about her? What about her? We talking about him right now. That is some devious activity. And the reason that when he started the video, the reason he said everybody's getting smashed by their ex is because he's projecting. That's it. Everybody's not getting. Some people get done and really be done. Oh, not on no angry shit or nothing. They just moving on to the next. That person is in my past. And then some people play in the mud. I couldn't disagree more. I couldn't disagree more with this guy's take. And this is a moral argument that I've had with my friends on many occasions, right? And again, it comes down to your morals, right? Do you believe that strange men, random men, should respect your relationship? Men that you don't know have any ties to should respect your relationship. No. But if, you're, if you've been dealing with women, you've been shut down before. And you know the different types of being shut down. You've been shut down and you know it's done. Don't chat to me. Don't approach me. Don't do that. You're done. And you've also been shut down where you know she ain't serious. He knew she wasn't serious. It's up to her to respect her relationship. It's not up to me to respect your relationship. I don't know you. There's no secret code. There's no, you know, that doesn't exist. Also, onto the idea that the guy was smashing. The guy who she was talking to to one to three months was smashing. Maybe it's just me. I don't believe that to be the case. There are tons of situations where women will let a certain man wait while she's getting bust down by this guy until they until she gets serious with this guy right and then she's like okay side piece we're done i'm with this guy now tons of situations heard it multiple times so i don't necessarily you know agree with the idea that 100 percent he was smashing he probably wasn't but again you guys let me know in the comment section am i tripping should should men just respect your relationship random men that you don't know because if we're saying, hold up, let me get this out. If we're saying we wouldn't protect a random woman that we don't know, we wouldn't put our life at risk from a random woman that we don't know. Why should a random man that we don't know respect our relationship? Jada Pinkett Smith, that's fucked up. Let's talk about the role of a wife. At least from the perspective of just sparing him. I'm not getting in the right and wrong. It's none of my business. I don't know about them. I don't want to know. But I know that it is uncomfortable and grotesquely unfair to emasculate your husband publicly. Publicly. He's Will Smith. How much smaller do you want to make him? How much? I mean, damn. Come on, Jada. This is wrong. You can't do this. You can't treat that man like that. It's none of our business. You screwing somebody, that's your business.
Your husband ain't getting this, ain't getting it done for you. That's your business. He was somebody else. You were somebody else. That's your business. You ain't got to be like that. Especially while you still married to him. Get a divorce. Give up the money. Got a prenup. Don't take anything from him. You got skills. You got a career. It ain't his. But how much do you need? Anything to get this to stop. Every time I see Jada Pinkett Smith talk about Will Smith, I cringe. And I have nightmares for any and every single man out there who once had a loving woman they pledged their, wife, their life to only to turn around and to watch them talk about you in a fashion that can only shrivel you to this. We kings. We kings. We ain't here to be treated like that. You're queens and you shouldn't be treated like that either. And I get that. And there's a responsibility that comes along with marriage and marital vows. And I understand. But even when they're not honored, even when they fall apart, that's supposed to be for you to handle privately. Tell me anywhere, biblically, scripture wise, in any scripture where it encourages you to publicize your personal business for profit. When it negatively affects your spouse. Because every time you do that, it instills a level of fear in men that makes them think, what if my woman does that? What if I get married and my wife turns on me and she does that? I've watched Red Table Talk on many occasions for years. You've empowered women. You've inspired women. You've talked about deep subjects that were, contrib that were a contributing force to women that helped make them better and make us better as men because it gave us a greater understanding of what you women go through. You're throwing all of that away because all we see now is a woman who seems hell bent on sabotaging, excoriating, and emasculating her man while she's making money off of it. Keep it up. And some people are going to sit up there and say, You ain't staying with him because you don't want to get divorced because of a promise. You stand with him because as long as your last name is Smith, as in Mrs. Will Smith. Will Smith is a man that we should all be able to respect. The hard work he's shown, the talent he has, the things that he's achieved. We should look at Will Smith's achievements and go, I want to be like that in my field. Whatever I'm doing, I want to be as successful as him. And before Jada Pinkett Smith started talking, I had absolutely nothing but respect for Will Smith. For his career, one of the greatest ever. But now, when I think about Will Smith, I just think... Simp, beta, Chris Rock slap, embarrassment. Now, turns out they weren't even together. What are you doing? How are you slapping Chris Rock about your wife and you've been separated this entire time? What are you doing? Why are you trying so hard to impress this woman that doesn't want you? Craziest thing is as well, Will Smith has never said one negative thing publicly about Jada Pickett. I've never heard him say one bad thing. Every time this woman speaks, I've seen so many TikToks. I might just chuck a couple up because it's so true. Hey Jada. Yeah, um, Jade, Jade and Willow not even here is for real. Uh, uh, okay. Mm. Yeah. In my opinion, and I may be being a bit overly dramatic, but I think she's tarnished Will Smith's legacy forever. We'll, we'll never look at Will Smith the same. Girl, if I'm doing too much, 
just let me know For some reason I just can't let this go I just can't get you out of my head For some reason I won't see you again Do you remember how we first began? We started as friends We started as friends For this love was forever and ever, forever and ever